Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about the siblings slash twins of our own son. We're going to be talking about these two stars that we discovered that just so happen to be very very similar to our son and we have a very high suspicion that they're basically our relatives. Let's talk about these two stars and welcome to What The Math. Now first, how can our son have siblings? In other words, you know, how can an actual star have relatives? And to explain this, well, you have to go back in time a little bit to try to understand how usually stars actually form. And to try to understand all of this, uh, we can actually take a look at the very, very famous region of space known as the Orion uh, Nebula, which is right there in front of us. And inside the nebula, we'll actually be able to find several regions known as the stellar nurseries. In other words, uh, regions of space that I'm going to jump to right now, where new stars are actually currently being formed, created, and um, essentially, in a sense, developed. But these regions always produce many, many stars from essentially the same material. And for the most part, these stars then go their merry ways across the universe, across our galaxy. Now, we think that this is exactly how our own sun was formed uh, about 4.5 billion years ago. And uh, for the longest time, we've actually been looking for stars that were similar, both in age and also composition, to try to identify um, basically siblings or uh, stars that were formed from the same um, cloud that was most likely a result of some kind of a supernova. And we've actually found one back in 2014 that was relatively similar to our sun and even had the same unusual elements that are present inside our sun as well, including elements like barium and uh, yttrium, which is very, very rare actually. Yttrium by itself is an extremely uh, rare material. It's part of the so-called rare earths. And fun fact, um, Yttrium was actually discovered in this really small town near uh, Stockholm in Sweden uh, that's known for like the most chemical discoveries ever. As a matter of fact, a lot of, a lot of different elements were discovered in this particular region. And uh, because of that, and I guess because uh, people were kind of used to naming things after where they were discovered, back in the days, uh, several elements were actually named after this little town. The town that you see right here by the name of Eterby. I'm sure I mispronounced that, but essentially that's kind of where we discovered this particular element, along with three others, uh, Erbium, uh, Terbium, and Eterbium. And as you can kind of hear from the names themselves, they actually sound very similar because they're literally named after the uh, town, which is kind of strange. They could have named it something cooler like Swedium or Stockholmium. But anyway, that's another story for another day. Let's go back to talking about the siblings we've discovered. So the first uh, star is known as HD 162826. It's located uh, right here in the constellation of Lyra, very close to constellation Vega. And um, for the most part, uh, it's actually very similar to our sun, but as you can see, slightly larger, slightly more massive, specifically about 15% more massive, and also a little bit hotter. But it's also a little bit younger. In other words, it may have formed um, kind of after our sun, so it's basically our younger, fatter sibling. But nevertheless, based on the actual observations of what's inside the actual star, it also contains about 3% more uh, metallic material, in other words, things that are not oxygen and not helium, suggesting that um, it may actually have more chance to have uh, bigger and more massive terrestrial planets. Now, we haven't discovered any uh, gas giants around it. In other words, there were no Jupiter-like objects. But we think that there's a very high chance that this particular star may actually have quite a lot of terrestrial planets around it. We just haven't really found them yet because they're not uh, moving across um, the actual line of sight. So we don't really see them just yet. But there is a very high chance they're probably there and we might be able to discover them with the new telescopes that are coming out. And for this particular star to actually have an Earth-like planet, it would have to be about 50% uh, more far away from um, basically where Earth is at a distance of about 220 million uh, kilometers from the star or essentially where Mars is. So if this particular um, star has a Mars-like planet, there is a very high chance that Martian planet would actually be um, habitable and possibly even have liquid water on it. 
But a more recently discovered star that was actually just discovered only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video, in late um, 2018, is literally the twin of our sun. It's practically identical to what the sun is like. It's a little bit farther away at a distance of just over 180 light years, whereas this one is only about 110 light years away. And this star is literally same in both uh, composition and also very, 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 very close to our sun in mass and in temperature. It is possibly a little bit younger. Uh, so once again, sun is probably the oldest of the three. And this star is uh, currently designated as HD 186302. So these three stars currently are basically siblings. They're very similar in almost everything. The age, the composition, the chance for having terrestrial planets as well. And based on what we know about our own sun, we can kind of estimate that these two other stars may actually have a very high chance of having more terrestrial planets for us to discover and eventually to explore. The distances here are a little bit far, I guess. It's over 100 light years, which is more than 25 times as far away as the nearest star to us. But once we're able to actually cover these distances, once we find a way to actually travel at really high speeds across the galaxy and to reach new stars, these two stars might actually be some of the first stars we'll be sending missions to with actual chances of them having habitable and very likely similar to Earth planets. Because those two stars are actually very similar to our sun, they're also very mild. They're basically almost ideal uh, stars for us to settle. And in that sense, um, this is actually really exciting that we're able to discover yet another star that's coming from the same sort of cloud of early sun-like objects that were formed in a similar region. Now, I'm sure there's other stars we're going to discover eventually, and uh, one of the reasons we're able to find this particular uh, new star is because of the ongoing Gaia mission that has actually identified several billion stars already. And so when using the Gaia telescope uh, data and combining it with another mission known as Amber that actually collected um, visual data from 230,000 stars, the scientists were able to identify this specific new discovery and realize that it was a clone or in some sense a twin of our own sun. And so once Gaia actually releases another data set in 2022, we'll most likely find even more twins and more similar stars to our own sun. In other words, more siblings. For now though, that's unfortunately all we know about these two stars. We know their distance, we know that they're identical or very, very similar to our own sun. And we of course know that um, they most likely form from the same cloud as our own sun. We don't really know if they have planets just yet. We suspect they do because of the actual composition of the stars and because of how our own sun is as well. But hopefully by 2022, when we actually get new data from Gaia, we'll have a chance to take a look at them with the new telescopes and discover some really, really cool planets there as well. So anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. And as we discover more about these two particular stars known as the Sun's siblings, um, I'm going to post a new video with an update and give you an idea of what we've discovered. So do subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.